It's the last business day of the week. Thank you for joining us. This is Business Incorporated coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimizie Obi Wabu. On the program today, Ford Motors is recalling nearly 16,000 Icon and Figo models in South Africa due to a potential fire risk. Malawi hopes the International Monetary Fund's approval of a $26.9 million loan could lead to more global lenders unlocking budget support. Plus, South African Parliament opposes the call to change the central bank's mandate. Well, let's get started. Of course, we're starting off with the markets. And here in Africa, beginning with the Nigerian stock market, which is still dragging after losing heavily on Wednesday, owing to banks' exposure to Etisalat, Nigeria. At intraday, the index was down 0.18%. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange interestingly rebounded uh, at intraday of trading at 0.03%. The market in Egypt, though closed uh, today for the weekend, uh, but went up 0.30% uh, on Thursday. Kenya market is still trading, but closed 0.73% on Thursday. I'll we'll move on now to the U.S. where the stock index futures pointed to a flat to slightly higher open on Friday as investors await the latest economic releases and speeches from Federal Reserve members while on the final day of trading for the week, economic data is expected to keep investors busy with manufacturing PMI data and services PMI data due at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time followed by the latest new home sales data out at 10 a.m. Well, let's bring in um, my colleague in New York City, Jill Maladrino, to tell us more. Hello, Jill. Thank you very much for joining us, and welcome back from your vacation. Hi, good morning, Jimmy. So let's talk about us approaching the halfway mark of 2017. And right now, the technology, healthcare, and consumer discretionary sectors continue to lead the market with tech advancing 19%, 15.8%, and 10.4%, respectively. Now, these sectors took the reins as 2017 kicked off, and investors who benefited from the Trump trade search for uh, areas offering more value in the aftermath of the post election run up. Now, the SP 500 has advanced 8.8% as of third. Thursday in 2017, and earnings expectations really haven't budged, and full year economic forecasts have been reduced. U.S. GDP is expected to be about 2.3% in 2017, that's according to Action Economics, and that's below the 3.3% expected in December. Well, besides the Trump bomb, earnings quality, as we saw in the first quarter, was actually quite good, isn't it? Right, that's right. About 76% of S&P 500 companies beat expectations, and after two years of flat growth, consensus estimates suggest that earnings will expand 10.5% for the S&P in 2017. Even though oil has been under pressure recently, oil fell deeper into bear market territory, and that's defined as a 20% pullback from recent highs. It settled at about 42.53 on Wednesday. That's a closing print it hasn't touched in 10 months. It's still a rebound in oil prices from 2016 when levels were as low as 26 a barrel in February 2016. So that could remain a key driver for the energy sector, that's according to CFRA. Now, boasting the best growth out of all 11 S&P 500 sectors, energy earnings will finally show growth after contracting significantly for two uh, consecutive quarters. So basically, they're comping against bad numbers. And the aggregated estimates, financial technology and materials, they're all expected to report double digits earnings in 2017. Energy financials in the consumer sectors, that include staples and discretionary, they will largely be the drivers of revenue growth, which is expected to improve to about 4.5% in 2017 from less than 3% last year. Well, of course, Jill, there has also been some stock-specific stories. Yeah, it was an interesting week for traders. Amazon's announcement last Friday to acquire Whole Foods is perhaps one of the biggest market stories in uh, the U.S. this year. There's lots of chatter around this between Amazon's direction and what the next potential acquisition is. 
and how that will impact pricing at Whole Foods and other grocers and what is a very low margin business to begin with. So basically, what doesn't Amazon sell at this point? There's also speculation going around about which grocer could be the next acquisition target. Sprouts Farmers Market's been thrown into that mix. Now looking at tech, legacy name Oracle made an incredible turnaround with the business and it really blew away earnings expectations, catapulting the stock to tech boom levels, suggesting that Oracle can possibly still grow in the cloud era. Well, Jill, I guess I have to leave you at this point. I'll show you have some important work to do this morning. Well, thank you for joining us. I do enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. You too. I will move on now to Europe, where the bourses there opened under pressure on Friday morning as investors monitored fresh data oil prices and, of course, focused on developments from the EU summit in Brussels. Now let's bring in my colleague in Frankfurt, Daniel Cook, to give us market update. Hello, Daniel. I'm sure you're ready to say, thank God it's Friday. Yeah, it's Friday, but I was all day looking, you know, basically to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I mean, it's fun talking to you. So, hit it on. Now, it's one year of the UK's Brexit referendum. Is it a happy anniversary today for both the yes voters and the no voters a year on? Well, I don't know which one you are. Yes or no voter? Well, that's a big question. It's, uh, you're right, it's the one-year anniversary. And remember, uh, one year ago when uh, people here came to the stock exchange in Frankfurt, I can tell you investors were shocked. Nobody was expecting uh, this to happen. Uh, you remember the day shares were going down uh, dramatically, uh, some even more than 10%. But what happened after is that actually shares recovered. And, you know, we saw in the last months, you know, basically a record after record, uh, you know, taking place. The only... Uh, the thing that was suffering uh, since then, basically since one year, is the pound that was uh, dropping uh, so much. Uh, it's very interesting when you talk uh, to experts now because, uh, you know, we are getting those predictions what is most likely going to happen when there is Brexit. And uh, it really seems to be the case that mostly the UK is going to be suffering. Of course, uh, Europe as well, but it's most likely going to hit the UK uh, very, very hard. And also, uh, you know, with this uh, talks right now in the, um, in the Brexit negotiations, uh, Theresa May, she doesn't have uh, the best position right now because we we remember that she just had this election. She even lost her majority in Parliament. Um, when you talk to some experts here, they're actually carefully saying that uh, they're not even really sure if Brexit at the end is really going to happen. I had uh, one analyst for one of the major banks here uh, in Frankfurt saying that he thinks that, uh, you know, we're going to see, of course, those negotiations are going to continue. But he has doubts that at the end there is really going to be a Brexit. So I guess the next weeks and months are going to be really interesting what's going to happen.